could cost a lot to go to the dentist, but not with Choosy. Meet Choosy, the payment app that helps you save an average of 24% of the dentist. No joke. It's free to download and easy to use. Download the app, find a dentist, and pay a lower price for the services you need. Save on cleanings, crowns, implants, and more. You name it, you save. And Choosy works whether or not you have dental insurance. Use Choosy as many times as you need on whatever you need. No monthly or annual fees. Ready to laugh yourself silly with savings? Learn more at smilewithchoosy.com. So a priest, a rabbi, and a giraffe walk into a bar. So and this that's guy what he walks said. up to the Which wheel. way did he go? Her husband's funeral. So we just stood and there. That's what so she is said. he black with white, white stripes? Or is he white the, with black stripes? What are you stripes? talking about? Who knows? Did he just say that? Oh, my. I don't think that's God. funny. What are you, some kind of comedian? Why, yes. Yes, I am. I'm Terry Walters. And I'm Terry Ann Zander. And we are Some, Some Kind, kind of, of Comedian. Comedian. And this is a podcast where we deconstruct the stand up world, one comedian at a time. Open your ears and your hearts and your mind and your wallets. Hey, not your wallets. What are you? Some kind of comedian? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, Terry Ann, how's it going? Oh, it's just fine. It's just fine. I know that this is a better time of the day for most comedians after um, noon time, at least. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, sorry, a lot of times we uh, are doing things in the morning, and I know uh, most comedians are not morning uh, early birds. They're more night owls. You got that right. Yeah. So, so you and I were kind of, we cheated a little bit. We talked a little bit earlier um, about some of the things that... Uh, have evolved uh, marketing wise um, as it relates to the COVID uh, kind of crisis uh, as it relates to our business. Do we have to talk about that anymore? <laughs> the COVID crisis or the- Yeah, uh, I don't wanna talk about that. All right, COVID well, we wanna talk anymore. about that. But but the thing we were talking about, which I thought was hysterical, is um, some of the tools that you and I are using, spe- specifically you. Um, what was the thing we were talking about earlier? Yeah, we're getting ready for a show. And so I'm in the market for microphone condoms. Um, oh my- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's a microphone condom? Well, I've called it that. That's not how they're marketed, but I think they should because they'd probably make more money. But I think uh, you're right. Yeah, it's all about marketing. Uh, product, place, promotion, price. Um, yeah, hmm. when you're when you're talking, right, you're getting your all over the microphone, so you kind of want to change them out in between people, right? We're all trying to do our jobs safely, mm-hmm. and so it's a nice way of protecting from transmitted diseases of a different kind if you will safe comedy yeah safe comedy we're all about safe comedy Mm -hmm. yes Mm -hmm. yeah i mean um yeah the microphone condom i think you're right that that's probably a better marketing um thing yeah Uh, i don't think they're lubricated um are they ribbed for uh, my pleasure they, they may be they may be but the ribbing on the on the uh cover might conflict with the ribbing on the microphone head i'm not exactly sure that's we, uh that's I'll a long be, way <laughs> i'll be trying them out with different size microphones over the next few weeks there may I'll be let some you know. uh, there may be some vibration going on there that we there may not be. need yeah um, we don't need any overstimulated microphones no and they do say you know in the business they do say eat the mic so yeah you want to be really close and um yeah yeah anyway we're uh, kind of getting um you know off um, topic dis- distracted uh <laughs> So uh, what I'm going to go do is disappear away from my mic, which is not really covered. Um, but um, but I'm going to throw it to you, and uh, you can bring in our guest. Fair enough, fair enough. I'd be happy to do that. Our first guest today is a uh, comedian who's started out doing all kinds of fun things. He's led a very interesting life, to say the least. Um, he's been a dean of schools. A teacher, I won't tell you which subject because that would give it away, mm. a police officer, a roadie for Jersey Zone Bruce Springsteen, and a manager at a strip club. That's actually how we first met. That's a lie. That's a lie. Um, <laughs> uh, and then the thing he's most passionate about is, of course, comedy. He's gone into podcasting. He's a stand-up regular at clubs all over New York City in the tri-state area. And he's been in the film The Irishman. If we could, I would like to bring up my friend Jeffrey Paul. Jeffrey Paul. Hey, Terry's. How are you guys? Good, good. Terry's. We've we've made we've become plural. <laughs> it's, it's true. It's true. Well, thank you ha- for having me. I appreciate it. 
Yeah, and and Terry mentioned it earlier. You know, we're usually uh, night owls and what have you. So, um, and you've been playing. I'm going to say the comedy underground and parking lots for a couple of weeks now. Ugh, yes, uh, parking lot shows, rooftop shows, <laughs> patio shows, backyard shows, uh, any place that will under a tent, any place that'll that's putting on shows right now that's legal to put on shows. Yeah, uh, I've been doing. Um, I just went through this week, probably since March, I've had, you know, the most activity I've had, you know, I've been, you know, working multiple nights in a row, being able to do multiple spots in a night, um, feels close to normal, but is not quite normal yet. Right, right. Yeah, I hear you. I mean, I think everybody's trying to find opportunities and I've noticed, you know, you're, you're pretty active, which is great to see, um, you're an inspiration, actually, for those of us who are are slowly getting back into it. Um, I'm I'm. Uh, you use the word legal. Um, I know a lot of stuff in New York is still not legal. Um, so that's a challenge because that's one of your bigger markets, wouldn't you say? Oh yeah. Well, one of the things I'm doing is um, I've really kind of like laid off opportunities on the road because um, I don't want to you know leave, come back, and have to quarantine for 14 days. So I've been really basically working New York and um, New Jersey and Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh, you know, so that's that's what I've been doing. Uh, yeah, you you touched on something which uh, you know I just want to discuss for a second. Yeah, it's um it's really stupid what this New York City is doing with you know amplified sound versus unamplified sound. Um, it's okay to be a musician and play guitar and perform, but not to be a comedian and, and talk. Uh, like, for instance, the shows in in, um, in Central Park you can do it without a microphone. You do it with a microphone that close you down. You know, you know, there's a great uh, club in Queens called QED. They have a back. I mean, there isn't a place that does it better than QED as far as the social distancing, the mask. Every comic that goes up, they give you a different microphone. Right. The microphones are cleaned. I watch them do it in front of me. Um, there's sanitizer, but they do it perfectly and they're going to close that place down because of amplified sound. So, but if there was a guitar player, that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it's a really it's a really shitty situation. There's no other way to put it. So we're all just trying to do the best we can, you know, with uh, with the outdoor stuff in bigger, you know, hey, I've gotten to a parking lot that's bigger than some of the rooms I've played, which is fantastic. But, uh, <laughs> you know, you're just going to. But what I'm doing is it's it's clearly a different experience. And when people go to a comedy show, whether it's in a theater or in a club or in a back room, it's all about the experience and the experience is different. Yeah. Right. We're not all packed in shoulder to shoulder, you know, creating the laughs that go through the room. Now the laughs are, you know, here and there in little pockets. So uh, it creates a challenge. Well, but, sometimes uh, they're not laughs at all because they're in cars and they're hunking the horns. Right. And they. It, <laughs> I've done. A, I've done a few of those shows. Yeah. No. I know. I think you were one of the first that I know that did them. And uh, kudos to you for you know, you know. Keep, keep honing right we have to hone what we're doing have you done any well i think we did a virtual show together too that's a whole other market if you will yeah no at the beginning i didn't like doing the virtual shows but now i love them um i think they're great to do uh to work out new material Mm -hmm. i think you can cheat on them a little bit yeah um but it really like you know now that i'm going you know doing probably 50 50 between zoom shows and uh live shows um i'm able to to like write and get material out there a little bit quicker than I have the previous uh, few months. Um, Zoom, I think, is a really great vehicle in doing that. And also, if you're able to get on like Zoom shows, like I know I do a show where it's like basically the same audience, same comics every week. Um, if you don't want to look tired and boring, it forces you to have to write a little bit more, and exactly. you can take some risks. Yeah, you know, and you great point, great point. Um, done a few myself and you're right we're spending a lot more time writing um than ever before right because we're forced to because again you don't know who the audiences are i don't know are you um are the shows you're doing um are they uh people paying to to attend the shows or is it really just offered as a free kind of thing or is it a combination yeah, the shows I did uh, this weekend, they paid. Um, I would say it's that's also about 50-50. Uh, it's either paid, but the price is much, much lower than – I mean, no one's paying $20 to get into a show unless 
you know, you go into a, a parking lot show starring Jim Gaffigan. You heard right. about that? $145 a call out. Um, and a lot of the other shows are past the bucket. Yep. No. Okay. All right. Well, that's fair. We're not having to get dressed up, right? Because we don't have to wear anything in our lower halves. And we're not having to travel, <laughs> which is kind of nice too, right? We're saving on gas, which is a bo- well, little bit of a bonus. I guess that's like the optimistic way of looking at it. The, the pessimistic way of it is <laughs> the, like, the, the we're, glass... also not make, we're also not making a living, you know? I, yeah, well, <laughs> right. that is the downside. So, I'm yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a pretty big um, wrinkle in the sheet there. Yeah, yeah. Well, again, you know, for people like yourselves where it is your, your primary livelihood, I get it. I get it. I'm, I'm fortunate that I've still got something else and this is more, I don't want to say, I don't want to call myself a hobbyist because I, I do get paid to do shows. So, um we talked about kind of like evolving and, and how you've had to hone certain things or practice some new skill sets. So we've talked about technology, right? Cause now you're doing some virtual stuff. Okay. You're, you're, you're doing podcasts now. Were you doing those beforehand? I want to talk about your podcast. I had done a podcast a couple of years ago. Um, but the podcast I'm doing now is called who's your band. And we had just started that in uh, January. Okay. And we had we were were on be ter- uh, on be terrific. Uh, I mean, we're everywhere you can find podcasts. Right. But we but we recorded in be terrific studios in Secaucus. It's a state of the art, beautiful studio. It's primarily a, a television studio, um, and we were really kind of amping up to, for like this, you know, the the summer to do some live remotes and at concerts and stuff. Uh, and then we kind of fell into this Zoom niche. And it, it's, you know, it took a little bit of, of an adjustment and we're just starting to find our footing. But uh, I, I've, I've, you know, I think during this time, you have to stay somewhat relevant. Otherwise, like, it's very easy for people to forget you. Yep. And I think the podcast, you know, doing uh, my own podcast, being a guest on various podcasts like like this one. Uh, and, and, you know, I mean, I'm probably doing a podcast or two uh, every week. Um yeah, you know, it, it just keeps your name out there. Uh, I've I filmed a, a sketch with other comedians that we we just recently put out. That's been getting the, you know some pretty decent heat. So I mean, you just got you know what it is, Terry. It all feels like piecemeal. You're yeah. putting it together, and yeah. if you ask me what I'm going to be doing in uh, six weeks from now, I probably couldn't answer that question. But in the past, I could tell you where I could be in three months from now. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. Well, yeah, and all those pieces, they're they're all related in some way, right? So one thing leads to the next that, that leads to the next. We're kind of like uh, jumping from one lily pad to the other in the pond. It's and, content. Uh, yeah. It's, that's, that's basically what it is. It's just constantly trying to put out some type of content, whether it be a tweet, whether it be uh, putting out a video, whether it be put out a podcast, whatever it is, just so people don't forget who you are. And also to keep that side of your brain working, writing, being creative. Um, I don't know if you've done any live shows, but I got to tell you the first couple of them, the, like back in June, um, even... You know, yeah, probably June, even parts of July, it still felt very weird and awkward. Um, I'm doing nothing. Like, uh, like I may be doing some old jokes, but they're definitely not in the same order. And it's a different twist and take on it. Um, yeah, I mean, everything – this has changed everything. Yeah. But you know what? You could. I think you could either complain about it, and I think that carries on with you. Or you like learn to like embrace it, live with it, and say, "All right, let me make the best of it." And, and, and you know, th- this weekend I've come home, and I've I felt good about my sets. You know, I'm doing new jokes. I'm doing I'm doing things differently. It's refreshing in a way. Good, good. It's not a complete reinvention, but it's certainly uh, it's right. some modifications that make it. You know. And it is good to to, to hone things because different audiences have different expectations. And you know what and, it does, and, Terry? Mm-hmm. It takes you out of your comfort zone, and that's the best thing that could be for a comedian. Right? Yeah. If we get complacent, right, we're done. I think that's true. I think that's true with be, just being alive. Think yeah. about why we're on this. Really, think about why you're on this planet. You know, Pete, is there anything sadder than someone who just does the same thing all the time? You know, I mean, I think we're on this planet to evolve, to do different things, you know, not just to just like survive. Right, right. You know, this this isn't like, you know, uh, you know, the the 900s. This isn't the time of Charlemagne. (laughs) 
That's before although, my time. Although, although my dates are completely off there, by the way. <laughs> you didn't teach history. I got it. I did. I did teach history. <laughs> Come on now. We have high Terry, expectations for Terry, a teacher. I, I have I have half my master's degree in history. <laughs> See there. Now you heard it first. I didn't tell the audience what, what you taught. So, but wasn't there another subject you also taught? So you I taught certain, history and what else? Uh, British literature. I taught English. <laughs> I'm sorry. Every time you say that, and I know it's part of your set, but every time you say it, I still laugh, knowing knowing that it's coming, <laughs> because, <laughs> because, because I'm around you, and I know, and I've heard you speak, and it's like, I just, I and I had British literature in school, so I know, and I, I kind of laugh every time. <laughs> Yeah, is there a truer line in my in in anything I say uh, when, when I talk about that and say it sounds like you know like Sylvester Stallone t- uh, teaching British lit? <laughs> Close your eyes, people. You can almost hear it. <laughs> it's all good. It's all. Yeah, good. you know what they say: fair is foul, foul is fair. <laughs> God, I love it. I absolutely love it. I was so glad you did it. <laughs> I'm trying to draw it out of you. See, people don't know we see, can't see each other. You're good. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, is he gonna go there? I didn't yeah, write it down. You on led the me down that path, Terry. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, so getting back to your um your podcast, um, and it's again, it's called Who's Your Band, and you're basically um interviewing music musicians and actors and athletes and comedians and politicians and talking about who they like as a band. I think it's an interesting mix of, of all different kinds of, um, you know, it's like almost like the crossroads, if you will, you're providing a, an outlet for all those groups to come together surrounded around music, which is, you have a love for music, obviously. Yeah. I, uh, I host it with, uh, Sean Morton, who's another comedian and, uh, you know, it's like two comedians that love music um have worked in music and we you know the one thing people do love talking about their mu- the their bands bands that they love yeah we, we've had uh the past episode we just uh recorded last week uh we had new york state um assemblyman uh charles fall on um basically you know we we focused a lot on the politics but we wound up bringing it around to music uh we've we've like you said we've had actors we had uh comedians and People talk very passionately about like their music, like like Rich Voss. We had Voss and Carol Montgomery, and we had them on the same show because they were both really strong uh, Springsteen fans. Yeah, so, and so we were able to talk about them, and they told some great stories about it. So yeah, so um, th- that's what the podcast is about, and you know we have some some super guests uh, coming up. Yeah, it's great. That's great. You know. Going back to comedy for a second, I mean, comedy provides a, a, a jumping off point for a lot of things, and it, it's a universal language in a lot of ways, you know, bringing people together, because who doesn't like to laugh to kind of relieve stress and anxiety and, and to be together with friends and what have you. I'm curious, when all the stuff that you did in your past life, before you said, I'm going to go down this comedy road and I'm going to, you know, travel it for as long and as far as I can, what, what made you make that leap, if you will? Great question. Um, always wanted to do comedy. Always wanted to be uh, an actor. Uh, in high school, um, I played uh, sports, but I also was in performing arts. Okay. Uh, in college, I acted in plays. That was the direction I wanted to go into. I also didn't want to be poor. <laughs> and I didn't want to struggle. And that's that's the reason why I have so much respect and really – I give out complete props to like a lot of these like young comedians that struggle and you know they they sacrifice a lot and they have multiple roommates. I didn't I didn't want to do that. Mm-hmm. And so I took a safe route. And you know do I re- I don't know if I regret it, but I maybe have, would have done things a little bit differently. You know, I okay. I should have pursued it a little bit earlier. Okay. But then I remember do you know who Nick DiPaolo is? I know the name. I don't okay, know. Nick DiPaolo is, is is a comedian, you know, pretty well known. And I wound up running into him at the stand one night, um, and I remember him asking me, he "Goes, you know, do you have cancer?" And I go, "No." He goes, "Are you sick? Do you have any? Do you have any any, any brain injury?" <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, "No, Nick, I don't have any of those." And he goes, well, "Then what's stopping you?" He goes, "You know." Good point. And I remember I remember that stuck with me. And I, and then there's, do you know uh, Buddy Flip? Mm-hmm. 
Buddy Flip also said, look, you know, just stick with it. There's a, uh, a niche for guys like us, like older guys. And that really, you know, I was able to then, because I've lived a full life, you know, you read what I've done before this. Right. I have right. a lot of different avenues to draw from. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, comedy is a young man's game, but there are different, like, like Buddy said and predicted, there's going to be different lanes that, you know, that, that appeal to like an older folk. Uh, you know, I've done, you know, I never expected to get back into acting and get the kind of roles I've been getting. Uh, I've gotten uh, commercial, you know, like, like you know, featured lead roles in these things. So um, you find your niche. You know, yeah, you may yeah. not be a fresh face at Montreal, but, you know, you'll be, you know, uh, you'll have a, a role in a Scorsese film. Right, you know? right, right. Which is awesome. And and you talk about experiences, right? You're talking about, you know, you've lived a little bit of your life. So there's those experiences to draw from. And I think, you know, there's a bunch of us that are that are in this a little bit older. We're not. But our material isn't old. Our material is very relevant, right? It's yeah. it's fun, and we we find that we have audiences that span a, a, a wide demographic. They're not all, you know, gentrified yet, and uh, <laughs> or <laughs> or calcified. Um, and then and and we can still do our stuff and have fun because we have experiences, and people like to learn from and hear about yeah I mean listen when you write just you know, write about yourself draw off of real you know, I think people want to um they they want to hear something that's authentic mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. that, you know something that that's kind of real so I mean you can talk about relationships you can talk about uh jobs you have you know you can talk about things as long as they're like they're kind of real and they're personal to you and you can make them funny right and you know listen I've seen some young comics who are Hacky as shit, you know. It's like, you know, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm broke. Are you? Are you broke? Like, you know, people, people didn't want to pay twenty bucks plus a two drink minimum to hear you bitch. You know, it's like they want to be entertained. So, you know, and, and that premise has been done a million times as well. Right. So, I mean, funny is look at look at some of look at some of like you know, older comics that are still great. You know, like Carol M- Montgomery, yeah. uh, you know, Voss. I mean, these are comics that are in their sixties. Right, and they're still they, they they look great. They they they're funny and they're relevant to shit. Yeah. So yeah, I don't think I'm, I think you know Apollo was was right when he said that. You know, yeah. there is you know there is a lane for us to be in, and and you know as as long as we're viable and 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 creative and and writing interesting things and being funny, you know, more we're power. Good. You should be pursuing it. We're good to go. Yeah. Well, ha- you mentioned the the films, the film work and commercial work. I mean. Is that is that being in the right place at the right time, or is that as much work to get into as well? I mean, how do you, how did you you know? Not everybody can get into a Scorsese film. Completely luck. I got the way I got that was um, if I had you, you know my my work ethic, you know, yeah. and, that, and that's something from from you know past life experience. And you know, if there's a you know a stage and people for me to perform, for, I'll do it. So there's a local cable tv show called the johnny p show and a lot of a lot of com- you know vic de potato has done a lot of comics have done it and um johnny asked me to be a guest on the show and i did it i did it with uh vito Picone and uh gary pastori who both wound up uh, being in the irishman by the way mm-hmm. um i do that show and i think nothing of it. i filmed it in in january and the reason why I did it is because that show filmed at 8.30 and I was hosting at Broadway at 11. So I was like, okay, I can fill my calendar on a weeknight here. This is pretty good. I thought nothing of it, Terry. Nothing of it. And went about my life. I'm going down to Atlantic City uh, to do a weekend's worth of shows. I leave on a Thursday night. And uh, I'm driving down to Atlantic City and uh, I get a phone call. From Gina Savage at Broadway Comedy Club, thinking that maybe she's asking me to come in and, you know, either the host, do a set, whatever it was. And she's like, um, they've been looking for you. Uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Ellen Lewis. Uh, I had no idea who Ellen Lewis was at the time. Right. Biggest casting agent in the country. Uh, she uh, is looking for you. They're interested in you in this new Martin Scorsese movie. Now I'm thinking these are my jackass friends putting Gina right, up right, to this. Right, right, right. You're on jackass, okay? right? Or yeah, you. yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, one of them being uh, Kevin Goatee. Yeah, I just, I just need to put him on blast, okay? Because he would do some <laughs> shit like that. Him and Andrew Lee. All right, and uh, I'm thinking this is a complete joke. There's no way I believe this. 
Uh, so, but I call him, uh, another one of my buddies, this guy, Kevin Dombrowski. He's a comic. Right. Um, we know Kevin. You know, he's done uh, some acting as well. I go, Kevin, j- j- just out of curiosity, can you tell me if there really is an Ellen Lewis and is, is there really a new Martin Scorsese movie? He calls me back in 10 minutes and goes, dude, pull over, call back that number. It's completely legit. I call. No answer. Now, it's also after 7 o'clock. No one's going to be in the office. Right. But I'm thinking if they're really interested in me, right. okay, they are going to they, – they will call me. Um, yeah, so this was during the week. Uh, I, was doing, I was doing a one-nighter in Atlantic City. I okay. drive back. I, instead of staying over, I drove home that night right. uh, to see if they were going to really call. I get up every morning. My, my routine in the morning is to watch Andy Griffin and to drink a cup of coffee. Okay? <laughs> and – Traditionalist. Before, before, <laughs> before I, I finish my, my uh, first cup of coffee, I get a phone call from Ellen Lewis's office. And Terry, here's the key. When they're nice to you, that's how you know they're interested. Yeah. And they send me over uh, – they actually send my agency uh, the script. And they, that didn't happen until a Thursday. And they gave me the weekend to, rem- uh, to memorize the lines. Now, I was, wor- I was booked all weekend. I was working all weekend. And I was running lines with – different comics um one thing about working with comics if you stink okay if if you're saying lines weird they will let you know okay so i went into this audition feeling pretty confident and when i read she said i nailed it and asked me if i'd be interested in a bigger role and gave me 20 minutes to learn the lines of something new now I'm, I don't have the benefit of running this over with comics or memorizing, and I come back in, and it's not quite as good because right. I'm, do, I'm doing a lot of overacting, a lot of blinking, a lot of dramatic pauses, and she goes, <laughs> stop. <laughs> yeah, she, she's a very direct woman. Uh, very, effect. very smart, very, very sweet, but very direct. She goes, stop. I know what you're doing. Just do it the way you did it before. And I did, and she said, you nailed it. You did great. And I asked her if I got the part. And she goes, well, it, you know, it's not entirely her decision. Uh, <laughs> Martin Scorsese w- watches these videos and has to decide. Um, awesome. That was at the end of August, beginning of September. Wow. I don't hear anything until the weekend after Thanksgiving. And I'm f- bugging out this whole time because my agency is telling me, just keep your count. Don't, don't, don't uh, accept anything on the road in December. I'm telling you, he's telling me this is going to happen. And, I, and I'm not believing it. Because right. I, yeah. I didn't think any, I didn't think anything that good would happen for me, mm. and sure enough, you know, come back after the weekend of Thanksgiving, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm on pins and needles. I'm like, dude, I send him a text in all bold. When you send in bold, you know that means something. <laughs> so I send it all in bold. I'm like, what is? Are they passing on me? A couple of hours later, I get a text from him. Call me when you get a chance. And I, I knew that was kind of good news. He's like, yeah, they, they made a contract offer. And uh, they need you to be available for the month of December, like you said. They, I, I'm telling you, once once you agree to do it, and they and they send you the contract. I mean, the, it's sent over the computer, and if you agree to it, you know, my agency took care of it. Within 45 minutes, I'm getting emails, phone calls from everything. I all of a sudden I have to go in for a wardrobe, and and a million things start happening. That's awesome. It's really it. It was like no other experience I have ever had before to work on that kind of like a major, major yeah, yeah. Uh, project. You, yeah, I mean, I've you done. Didn't, you didn't. You didn't even start small and go big. You just went big. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I went. I mean, I've I've done like commercials and and like you know other stuff, mm-hmm. but nothing where like I had to go to a rehearsal with Pacino. I had to have a meeting and uh, meet with uh, Scorsese. Right. Um, that was, I mean, that was surreal. Yeah, that's really cool, and that'll always be with you. And that's something yes. that you can tell yep. your your you know. Well, you have kids, your adult children, and you know your grandkids. Even it's like that's that's uh, lives in history. That's a historical thing. But I always think back to Buddy Flip saying, "If you stick around in this long enough, something will happen." Yeah, yeah. Well, he was you know, right. He you was know, right. there is like there is a there is a spot for you know you know for, for people like uh, well over thirty. Yeah, you I know? think it's awesome. I think it's awesome, and you know that's 
I'm waiting for my big break, and uh, it'll happen with a Geritol commercial. Do they still make Geritol? I'm not sure. I don't even know what Geritol is. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. What, I, don't, I don't know. Is that a cough medicine? Or? I, spent, I spent a little too much time, the I think, in, G- the, in the Geritol? CVS, Walgreens, and uh, right yeah. in of the world. Uh, I'm giving fair treatment to all pharmacies. What do you think? When you have a headache, do you take Excedrin? You know, I mean, I, <laughs> no, my my grandmother used to take Anison's. Anison. Oh, God. Oh, my God. She used to pop them like Terry, that. Terry, like when you want diet soda, do you drink tab? Uh, Is that what you drink? I, no, no. No, I do not. But thank I do Fresca? drink tab. <laughs> Fresca. I mean, these, these are things I remember, like like old stuff growing up. Yeah. I mean, we could do a whole show. You know what? We're going to do a show called Memory Lane. And we're going to have everybody submit all their favorite things from when they were growing up. And I don't, and it would go far beyond the half hour that we have here today. So <laughs> that's a lot of fun. I, I appreciate the story and I'm glad to hear it. And I'm glad, you know, couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. I got to oh, say thank that. You. You're a, you're thank a great you so guy. Much. And, uh, and really appreciate getting to know you over the last couple of years. You know, we've, we've, We've um, we've gotten to perform and have some fun and learn things about each other, um, but um, as with all good things, must come to an end. And so today we're going to have to wrap up our our little story and sharing. And and who knows, maybe we can bring you back when uh, when you bring out your next. I, I know you got another film that's already been filmed. It's probably in post production now, but no release date. Um, well, that's the thing with the movie industry right now. I mean, they're not releasing anything. Yeah, uh, yeah. Movie theaters are, are maybe going to open within the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah. But, no, but nothing has been – is being released at this point. So uh, that movie is called Hungry Saints. I filmed that last year. Hopefully that uh, comes out. And I'm supposed to be filming another one uh, next month called Midlife. Oh, great. Well, that sounds about right. We're we're in our midlife, right. and it sounds like a very appropriate title. <laughs> well, we'll look for those. We look for those. Well, I appreciate. it. I'm going to share with everybody how to reach out and uh, if they want to get in touch with you and learn more and follow and all that. So I'm going to share all your social, and then uh, we're going to have to say our goodbye. So Jeffrey Paul can be reached on Facebook under Jeffrey Paul, under Twitter Jeffrey Paul seventeen, and on Instagram Jeffrey Paul two three six three. Again, um, you know, he'll be at a comedy club soon. Um, just look for him. He's he's everywhere. Um, so don't hesitate. I hope you've had a good time with us, Jeff. And uh, oh, This was great. It's, it's so good uh, seeing you, Terry. And nice meeting you, uh, other Terry. <laughs> hey, no problem. <laughs> nice meeting Ter- you too, Jeff. P. Terry Dactyl. <laughs> <laughs> she mixes that up each show. So everybody, if we could, just remember to love and laugh with some kind of comedian. Hey, thanks for listening. We consider you our fans, our groupies, if you will. So please support us by subscribing to the show on the podcatcher of your choice. You can also find us at somekindofcomedian.com. The opinions expressed on Some Kind of Comedian are the opinions of our individual guests and not necessarily the organizations to which they're affiliated. Some Kind of Comedian is a production of Taz Comedy and Moonfish Production Limited. Thanks again for listening, and hey, keep laughing. Okay, Jeffrey, this is one of our favorite things on our show, one of the most exciting things we do. Um, we, we ask a question, and, um, and let me just tell everyone that you have not been um, uh, advised of what this question is before asking. It comes from the Book of Questions by Gregory Stock, Ph.D., and here we go. Would you be willing to give up sex for five years, if you could have wonderfully sensual and erotic dreams any night you wished. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, Why, no. Are you, are you crazy? <laughs> Kind of question? No, no. That, that, that way, I can I cannot have sex and act on it, but I could be teased about it in, in, every night. That would be like living in like in Freddy Krueger land, only in a, <laughs> only in a weird sexual Teddy, Teddy Krueger land. Uh, you heard it first. Jeffrey would prefer sex over sensual dreams for the rest of his life. Sensual dreams. I, I don't need sensual dreams. You know what I need? I need I, I need calm, soothing dreams and really good, passionate sex. I don't need. I don't, I don't no no absolutely not Terry that's that's a no brainer okay please okay come, come at me with something harder all right next time next time we will <laughs> you heard it thanks again all right guys good night.
It could cost a lot to go to the dentist, but not with Choosy. Meet Choosy, the payment app that helps you save an average of 24% of the dentist. No joke. It's free to download and easy to use. Download the app, find a dentist, and pay a lower price for the services you need. Save on cleanings, crowns, implants, and more. You name it, you save. And Choosy works whether or not you have dental insurance. Use Choosy as many times as you need on whatever you need. No monthly or annual fees. Ready to laugh?